Jonathan Gavoni of DraftExpress.com. We're here in Portland, Oregon with Harry Frawling at the Nike Hoop Summit. Harry, how's it going out here so far? No, it's been good. Obviously, the first couple of days we've been getting after it and it's been tough, but um, it's been good, so um, I've enjoyed it. Why is that obvious? As in... You said obviously. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> what do you mean, obviously? I'm just messing with you. Uh, tell me... Yeah, exactly. Tell me about your role um, for this team. What does Coach uh, Rana want you to, uh, to do for him? I think just the open shot. If I've got the open shot, take it. Obviously, I haven't been shooting too well early in this uh, training, but I think it'll come. And um, just playing hard. Like, I'm going to play hard. I'm going to get after it and uh, be a bigger body inside. And obviously, I'm going to take advantage of my size and um, I guess just play hard. That's, like, that's my game. So. You've gotten a lot of exposure here in North America the last few months between the BWB where you won MVP and now this where it looks like you're going to be one of the, the focal points of the squad early on at least. What has that been like for you? Uh, I don't really look into it too much. Obviously there's all the write-ups and what I need to work on and what I'm doing well and like I don't look into it too much. I know what I've got to work on. I've got to work on my explosiveness, my lateral quickness and uh, my body. Obviously that's going to be a big thing when I get into a college environment and I've got access to the facilities 24-7. Like where I'm at back home it's difficult uh, getting to and from the gym and to the uh, fitness fitness gym as well. So I know what I, get need, what I need to work on and what I don't need to work on. But um, I guess it's just going to be a big thing for me. You got some opportunity this year to play um, at the pro level um, in the NBL, which is a very high level going up against grown men. Um, not a ton of minutes, but still a, a decent amount. What, what was that like for you? Oh, it was good. Obviously, going to college, there's going to be bigger, physical, more physical guys. So playing in that really helped me because a lot of those guys are ex-college, ex-NBA and ex-Europe guys. So I guess just learning how to um, use my body and compete against those sort of guys was good. You're a 6'11 and, and a strong guy, uh, but you also have the ability to step out and face up a little bit. Um, how do you see yourself fitting into this kind of modern day basketball? You went to an NBA game yesterday, you got to experience that firsthand. H how do you see yourself fitting into that? Oh, I think due to the game developing and Bigs being more versatile, I think um, it's, it's a good time for me. So um, obviously if I've got a small guy, I can step, out, uh, step into the block and play him on the inside and be a creator. And uh, if we've got a bigger, slower guy, I can go out to the perimeter and go by him. And uh, obviously, I'm always looking to create, and I'll probably need to score a bit more every now and then. But um, obviously, that's one of my advantages. So, in terms of reaching your full potential, what what are the things that you need to work at? You said already explosiveness, but anything yeah. else? Uh, obviously, defensively, just in general, lateral movement, uh, on-ball screens, on-ball D, all that. Like, pretty much, you got to work on everything. I got to work on my shot. I got to get that consistent. Obviously, it hasn't been consistent this week, and. Um, Everything, physicality, strength, muscle, like, there's, there's always stuff to work on, but the biggest thing for me will be uh, defense. So, What stood out to you about SMU and Larry Brown that made you decide to commit to them? Uh, I don't know. I think it was just the fact that Larry, Larry was there. Like, obviously, he's a great coach, and uh, the opportunity to play with all their bigs, Marcus and uh, Jordan Tolbert leaving, um, there's a good opportunity for minutes, and uh, some of the guys coming in, we've got three freshman bigs, so um, obviously there's going to be opportunity to play early, and... Uh, that's just that's all you can ask for. So. The, um, looking towards the senior level, I know that's going to be a, a ways away for you at the Australian national team level. I mean, it's a loaded group, especially inside. Uh, how do you see that playing out? And 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 are you do you think you see yourself being able to carve out a niche with the national team later on? Yeah, obviously I'm going to work. Like I'm not, it's going to be the coach's decision in the end. Like I'm not the one that picks the national team, but uh, I'm going to keep working. I'll keep in, I'll keep in contact with all those guys over there, and they tell me what they want me to work on to be a, a boomer. So um, that's a big thing for me, and I'll just play hard and let them make the decision. So there's a long tradition of Australia developing great basketball players. Um, dating back many years but it seems like there's been kind of an explosion here the last three to five years with you know NBA draft picks coming out every single year why do you think that's been because it doesn't seem like the NBL has taken off the same way that just Australian basketball has yeah. uh, I think a big things college and uh, the, the US high school kids so everyone's starting to explore uh, come over to USA and see what it's like like obviously in Australia you have that doubt because you don't play against the US kids and um, guys don't like in Australia sort of frowned upon if you go to a Duke or Kentucky or uh, something like that so I guess now Ben Simmons started Dante was a big time prospect and now it's sort of starting to evolve and kids are coming to high school in America like Thon and uh, developing and seeing they can compete and then get that exposure so I think that's probably one of the biggest things just coming over here. 
do you think that Australia is going to be able to continue to produce those athletes? I mean, there's a lot of competition at that level, you know, with Australian football and soccer and, and rugby. I mean, Australia is great at a lot of different sports. Are they, is basketball going to continue to attract that talent? I think it is. I think obviously with uh, Dante, Ben, Joe Ingles, all those sort of guys actually making the NBA now, a lot of the kids are actually, eyes are opening and they're realising that it is possible. And uh, it's not just, a, I guess, a role player or all the guys that were at the end of the bench from Australia back in the day sort of thing. So um, obviously kids are starting to play and they're starting to get idols that are in the NBA and they're, they're realising it's possible. So I think uh, basketball is growing in Australia. Does that translate to the media exposure, to TV, to the newspapers? Are they writing about basketball? Uh, in my local town, they write about, like, I don't really, on the national news, it's not really, like, if I do anything, it's not like it's on national news, but it's on the um, local news and all that sort of thing. Like, they get around it, but that's the big thing in Australia. Like, we're not about the hype sort of thing, so I guess that's, I don't know, but the uh, style of basketball in Australia is a lot different, more team basketball and playing the right way uh, as compared to some of the uh, US or sort of guys that are more selfish and you can tell that it's a different style of basketball. So um, I think that's a big thing, keeping the uh, hype down. So, is that How is that going to translate to Saturday? Is that what you guys need to do to, def to, to overcome you know, what looks like just a loaded US group? Yeah. Uh, is that what you're going to have to do to win that game, to just be more unselfish? Yeah, obviously, uh, U.S. man for man, they're more athletic. Like, when you look at it, it's, there's no questions asked. So we're going to have to beat them with uh, playing as a team and playing hard. Like, we're going to have to go to our strengths and we're going to have to uh, play play strategy. So, um, obviously, we're not going to beat them athleticism-wise, but I think we're just going to have to play hard. How do you view yourself as an NBA prospect? I know you've been able to open up quite a few eyes here with the way that you performed here. Is that a realistic goal for you? And, and how quickly do you think you'll be able to make that, that jump? Obviously, I want to play in the NBA. That's a goal for me. That's what I'm working towards. You have to work on my body and my uh, fitness and athleticism to get there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm not optimistic about it, but um, I know I can do it, and I'm going to work towards it. But um, I, don't, I don't play to impress anyone. I just play hard, and I try and play the right way. And uh, if that's an NBA player, then there it is. If it's not, then I'll live with that. You said you're not optimistic about it. I got mixed up with my words there. Sorry about okay, that. You are. I think I can make the NBA. Right. Okay, great. I mean, you've held your own against, you know, the number one guy in high school basketball, according to many, and, you know, you've been the best player on the world team, and that historically translates well to the NBA. Um, so you saw Enos Cantor last yeah. night, I mean, have a monster game. I mean, he did that here at the Hoop Summit a few years ago, so why not, right? Yeah, exactly. Obviously, it's, it's a dream, and I'm going to work towards it, and I think I can do it. You just got to believe in yourself, and that's what I think. So, um... You know, as I said, I'm not going to go out there trying to impress or go out of my way to score 50 points or score whatever it is. I'm just going to play hard and uh, play my style of play. Great stuff, man. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Good luck.